Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to Creative Grandma. I decided to take a break from all my big projects and make a nice quick and easy dishcloth. This is called the Farmhouse Dishcloth and it has just enough texture every other row to really help scrub those dishes. This is a fantastic pattern. It's just a really pretty pattern and we use this textured stitch here to do the last round of our border to just add a lot of interest to our dishcloth. So for today's project you're only going to need one skein of the Premier Home Cotton yarn. So let me tell you a little bit about this particular style of the Premier Home Cotton. This is 96 yards, 88 meters, 1.94 ounces, 55 grams. It's 85% cotton, 15% polyester. Now this is the information you're going to use. These are the smaller skeins and this is what you need if you want to substitute yarn for your yardage or ounces. This is just one of the many beautiful colorways they have. And then they have the Premier Home Splash colors. Now this one has just a couple extra yardages in this one. They have beautiful colors available in the Premier Splash. They also carry a line of the multi colors and I thought this was a really pretty color for the fall. And again, this has just a couple extra yards in the multi colors as well. And you can get all the information off their website. I'll have a special link in the description box underneath this video. It'll take you directly to Premier Home Cotton for this project. And then if you like solid colors, they have many wonderful solid colors available as well. With the holidays coming up, you may want to choose some red, white, and green and make a trio of dishcloths and give them as gifts for holiday presents. Now this solid color skein has 131 yards compared to the 96 yards of the uh, speckled yarn. So with the solid colors, you get a little more yardage with that skein. So again, you only need one skein for the dishcloth. You're also going to need a size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. So let's go ahead and let's get our project started. So for my project, I already have my yarn attached to my hook and you can use whichever method you prefer for attaching your yarn. We're going to begin and we're going to chain 25. You're going to yarn over the hook, pull it through the loop on your hook and that creates your first chain. Yarn over, pull through, that's two, three, four, five. Continue until you have a chain with 25 chains and I'll be back and we'll start row one. I have my chain with 25 chains and now we're ready to begin row one. For row one, we're going to skip the first three chain and we're going to work a double crochet into that fourth chain from hook. Yarn over, skip one, two, three, insert into the fourth chain from hook, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two. You just made your double crochet. So now for the rest of the row, we're just going to work one double crochet in each chain across. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a double crochet. Double crochet into the next chain, double crochet into the next chain, So now you're just going to continue and work one double crochet in each chain across to the end of the row and I'll meet you at the end of row one. I'm over at the end of row one. We worked one double crochet in each chain across and when you get to the end of the chain you should have a total of 23 double crochet stitches and that is counting that skip chain three that we skipped in the beginning as your first double crochet. So as long as your stitch count is correct, let's go ahead and begin row two. For row two, we're going to start and chain one. You want to do your chain ones loose. We're going to skip the beginning chain one. We're going to skip our first stitch, which is right here. So when you look at your work, you're skipping the chain one, you're skipping the first chain, and we're going to double crochet into this next stitch. 
yarn over, skip the beginning chain one, skip the first stitch, and into the next stitch work a double crochet. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and make sure that you're doing the slip stitches loose or your stitches will be too tight when you do the next row. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch and pull through the loop on your hook and make sure this is loose so that stitch is big enough that you can get in it when you come back through. If you make that stitch too tight, you're gonna have a real hard time getting into that. So now we're going to start our repeat. We're going to double crochet into the next stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch and we're going to repeat that across to the end of the row. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a double crochet. Insert into the next stitch and work a slip stitch. Insert under the top two loops, yarn over, pull through that stitch and then pull through the loop on your hook and make sure you keep that loose. Very, very important with this stitch pattern. So that is the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. Double crochet into the next stitch. Slip stitch into the next. Let's do it one more time double crochet into the next stitch, slip stitch into the next. So go ahead and repeat, double crochet into the next stitch, slip stitch into the next, double crochet into the next, slip stitch into the next, repeat that across to the end of the row and you should end with the slip stitch into the last stitch across. I'll meet you at the end of row two. I'm over at the end of the row. I have two stitches remaining. I have the last double crochet and then I have the turning chain. So now I'm just going to work my repeat in the last two stitches. I'm going to double crochet into that next stitch and then you're going to insert your hook right into the top of that turning chain three, insert into the top chain, count up one, two, three, insert into that chain and slip stitch. So now we're getting ready to start row three. To begin row three, you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and you're going to turn your work and then you can see our texture forming on the front of our dishcloth. See how that texture pops up just a little bit. Beautiful stitch pattern. So we chained three for our first double crochet and now we're going to skip that first stitch because our chain three acts as the first stitch. You're gonna make sure you skip that first slip stitch and we're going to double crochet into this next stitch. Yarn over, you're going to skip the beginning chain three, you're skipping that beginning slip stitch, and you're inserting into the top of that next double crochet stitch. Now be very careful, make sure you turn your work towards you and you go into the top two loops and not this side of the stitch. Very easy to wanna to go in the side. You wanna make sure you turn your work and get under the top two loops. Work a double crochet. And for this row, we're working one double crochet in each slip stitch, which is this short slanted stitch here, and then one double crochet into the top of that next double crochet. And again, make sure you don't go into the side, really turn it so you can see the top of those stitches. So let's go ahead and begin. Double crochet into that next slip stitch and you're going under both of those top loops. Now if that is really hard to get into, make sure you loosen those stitches when you're doing the next row with the slip stitches. Double crochet into that slip stitch. Double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. And again, we're just going to repeat that one double crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row. So go ahead and work one double crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row three. 
I'm over at the end of row three. I have my double crochet remaining and I have my chain one from the previous row, that starting chain one. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to double crochet into that last double crochet stitch. And then when you look at your work, if you're new, this is where you probably will mess up. You have to remember to double crochet into that beginning chain one from the previous row. So it's your ending turning chain. So just yarn over, insert into that chain one space, work a double crochet. And when you're working this pattern, you should have a total of 25 stitches across. To continue working on your dishcloth, you're going to click back on the video and you're going to repeat row two and row three six more times. When you repeat that and you're at the end of your sixth repeat, you're going to be at the end of row 15. So again, just click back on the video, repeat row two and row three six more times, and I'll meet you at the end of row 15. I'm over at the end of row 15. This is what our dishcloth looks like. You can see that beautiful texture every other row. Just gives it a great look to this dishcloth. So now we're getting ready to start the border. So to start the border, we're going to immediately start working down the length of our dishcloth and around. So we're not going to turn our work. I'm going to zoom up and we're going to get started on round one of our border. So to start round one, we're going to immediately insert our hook right around the post of the last stitch worked, which is the first row end stitch going down the length. Insert your hook underneath the post of that stitch and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull underneath that stitch and through the loop on your hook. We're going to begin with a chain three. One, two, and three. This beginning chain three counts as our first double crochet. We're going to work two more double crochet into this same space. Yarn over, insert around the post of that same stitch, work two double crochet. One, and two. And now we're going to start our repeat down the length of our dishcloth to the next corner. So when you're looking at your dishcloth, you have the two row end stitches. We've just worked around this one. You have a slip stitch row end stitch and a double crochet row end stitch. We're going to work one double crochet into the slip stitch row end stitch and two double crochet into the next double crochet row end stitch and we're going to repeat that down to within the last row. We're not working in that last row, we're just working down to it. So let's begin. Double crochet into the next slip stitch row end stitch. Two double crochet into this next double crochet row end stitch. one and two. One double crochet into the next slip stitch row end stitch and again that stitch is right between those two double crochet row end stitches. Two double crochet into the next double crochet row end stitch. One and two one double crochet into the next slip stitch row end stitch, two double crochet into the next double crochet row end stitch, and because this is a small project I'm going to work the border right down to the corner with you. Double crochet into the next slip stitch row end stitch, Two double crochet into the next double crochet row end stitch. One and two. Double crochet into the next slip stitch row end stitch. Two double crochet into the next double crochet row end stitch. One double crochet into the next slip stitch row end stitch. We're almost to the corner. Two double crochet into the next double crochet row end stitch. One 
and two. One double crochet into the next slip stitch row and stitch. And then you'll notice we're back to our next corner. We have one row and stitch to go. Now in the last row and stitch, you're going to work three double crochet. So yarn over, insert into that last row and stitch, and work three double crochet. One, two, and three. So now we're getting ready to work across the bottom of the foundation chain on the bottom of our dishcloth. We're going to go into the first chain across the bottom and that chain is directly below the post that you just worked around. So we're going to go right into this small starting chain which might be a little tight and we're going to work three double crochet. Yarn over, insert into that first chain, work three double crochet. One, insert back into that same beginning chain, work a second double crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same chain, it's going to be a little tight, work that third double crochet. Now we're going to work one double crochet in each chain across and if you're not sure where the chain is, you can just pull your work apart, find your next double crochet stitch and go right into the base of that stitch. That's how you can find your next chain. So we're going to work one double crochet into the next chain and you can see I'm working right over that piece of yarn and I'm going to weave it in as I crochet that's left from starting my chain double crochet into the next chain and again just follow those double crochet stitches down and you can find that chain. Double crochet into the next chain double crochet into the next chain Continue and work one double crochet in each chain across until you get over to your turning chain. I'll meet you there and show you how to do the corner. I worked one double crochet in each chain across the bottom of my dishcloth. Again, this is upside down because we worked down the side. Now we're working across the bottom and I'm over to my corner. So I just wanted to show you how to do that corner. So I'm going to zoom up. So when you look at your corner, you'll notice here's another double crochet and here's our a starting chain where we skip those first three chains to start row one. So we're going to double crochet into that double crochet stitch. So when you look at this uh, turning chain here of where we skipped those three chains when we started row one, we're going to go into the very next chain right after the last double crochet. We're going to work three double crochet right into this uh, next chain. Yarn over, insert into that next chain, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. So now we're over to our row end stitches and we're going to work it the same way we work the other side. So I'll work it right down to the corner with you. We're going to work three double crochet around the post of this remaining chain from that skip three chain. So yarn over, insert around the post of that chain, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. You're going to work one double crochet into that next slip stitch row and stitch. Yarn over, insert into the slip stitch row and stitch, work one double crochet. Two double crochet into the next double crochet row and stitch. 
one and two. Double crochet into the next slip stitch row and stitch. Two double crochet into the next double crochet row and stitch. One and two. One double crochet into the next slip stitch row and stitch. Two double crochet into the next row and stitch. One double crochet into the next slip stitch row and stitch. Two double crochet into the next double crochet row and stitch. One double crochet into the next slip stitch row and stitch. We're almost to the corner. Two double crochet into the next double crochet row and stitch. One double crochet into the next slip stitch row and stitch. Two double crochet into the next double crochet row and stitch. and then one double crochet into that next slip stitched row and stitch. So now when you look at your work we have one row and stitch remaining and we're going to work three double crochet around the post of this last row and stitch. Yarn over, insert underneath and around the post of that stitch, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. So we have one side to go. We just worked around all three sides and now we're going to work across the top back over to where we started round one. You're going to insert right into the top chain when you look at your work and you see you work those three double crochet around the post of that stitch, there'll be one chain remaining at the top. We're going to work three double crochet into this next chain. Yarn over, insert into the chain, work three double crochet. One, insert back into that same chain, work your second double crochet and then insert back into the same chain and work your third double crochet. So now we're going to work one double crochet in each stitch across to this last stitch. You're not going to work in that last stitch. So let's begin. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. You're going to continue and work one double crochet in each stitch across until you get to this last stitch. Stop there. I'll meet you and show you how to finish round one. I just worked around all four sides of my dishcloth and now I'm back to where I started. So when you look at your work, I just worked into that last double crochet stitch. But when you look at your work, you'll also see that there's one more stitch remaining. We worked around the post of that stitch when we started round one and we're going to finish by working right into the top of that stitch. We're going to work three double crochet in the top of that last stitch across. Yarn over, insert into the top of that last stitch, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. We're going to join our round by joining with the slip stitch in the top of that beginning chain three. Count up one, two, three. Insert your hook into the top of that chain and slip stitch. 
So round one is finished. We have one more round to go. We're going to take this textured pattern here and we're going to work it around all four sides for a beautiful finishing touch. So let's get started on round two. So now we're ready to begin round two of our border. So to begin, you're going to chain one and you wanna do that loosely. We're going to skip that same beginning stitch where we just chained one. We're going to skip that joining stitch and we're going to work a double crochet into the next stitch. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a double crochet. And now we're going to start our repeat. The repeat, we're going to work around all four sides of the dishcloth. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and double crochet into the next stitch and we're going to repeat that around. Slip stitch in the next stitch, double crochet into the next. So let's begin. Insert into the next stitch and slip stitch. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch and work a double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. Now we're going to do it again. Slip stitch into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. And again, that is the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. Slip stitch into the next stitch, double crochet into the next. And that's all there is to the repeat. So go ahead and slip stitch into the next stitch, double crochet into the next, slip stitch into the next, double crochet into the next. Repeat that around all four sides and I'll meet you at the end of round two. I worked around all four sides of my dishcloth. Let me zoom out a little. So we put that border all the way around our dishcloth and now we're going to go ahead and join. So when you look at your work, you'll notice you ended with a double crochet into the last stitch. Here is our first stitch where we started round two and we chained one. So you're going to slip stitch right into the top of this beginning chain one. Now I know when you look at your work, if you're new, this is going to look like a stitch, but this is not a stitch. This is what I call the joining bar. When you join that round, it creates this bar with the strand of yarn that looks like a stitch, but you can see that this is the first stitch and that's where we chained one. So skip the joining bar, insert into that chain one space, and slip stitch. So round two is finished. I'm just going to fasten off my work, and I usually chain two. Pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab the yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. To finish your dishcloth, all you need is a yarn needle. Just take that piece of yarn that you fastened off. You're going to thread it through your needle. And then you're just going to come over on the wrong side of your dishcloth. Just flip it over and just take it down through your stitches. So I like to just weave it in and out down through those stitches. And then just pull it kind of snug. That's why I say always leave a longer length so you have enough room to maneuver that yarn needle. And then I'm going to take it over through a few stitches. And then I'm going to bring it back and always skip a stitch so it has something to really grab a hold of. Bring it back. And then I even like to take it through a third time. I skip a stitch. Go under the next stitch and then I'm just going to come up through these stitches. And because there's a little bit of gap there, I'm even going to take it again because I have enough yarn. I'm just going to weave it down and back through because I don't like how that gap will probably pull that strand of yarn out. Because you're doing the dishes, you really want to have that end nice and secure so it doesn't work out when you're scrubbing dishes and moving the cloth back and forth. 
So let me trim that off. And that is our farmhouse dishcloth. And if you really look, you can see that texture really nice for scrubbing those dishes. It's just a nice, beautiful pattern. If you enjoyed today's crochet tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the crochet fun. Thank you, everybody. And until next time, happy crocheting.